How you doing? Pat here with Pat's Rides. I bought a uh, Hex Easy Can. I'm going to use it to put my garage door opener on the bike and install an air horn on the bike. Stick around, stay tuned, and let's see how difficult I can make this look. First thing you need to do for safety so you don't fry the electronics is disconnect the battery. Both terminals. Fishing the wire through this little hole became quite the chore. I had to get me a, a little pull rope going first and the reason I use masking tape over electrical tape is you'll see here in a second how easy it is to, to break and come apart and it doesn't leave a sticky residue. It's an electrician's trick, something I learned years ago. I don't show it, but I ran the wiring for the horn right back up through the same gap where the uh, power wires for the Hex Easy Can went. Yes, pulling that wire through there because of the fuse was kind of a pain in the butt the way it looks. See how easy the masking tape rips and comes off with no residue? A lot easier than electrical tape. Electrical tape will stand up to more abuse if you're having a really hard time pulling over masking tape. Just thought I should throw that in there. This is the tiny rubber plug that covers the USB port of the Hex Easy Can so you can interface it with the laptop. Very hard to manipulate, and I have small hands. This is what the software looks like. If you look over here, this is a flash to pass system for my garage door opener. You scroll down here, you can see the horn set up. I am using circuit one for the flash to pass system. I am using circuit two for the horn. All right, I'm just gonna hold the GoPro here by hand. You can see my garage door's open right now. Yeah, my house is more than 130 years old. Give the old basement some uh, leeway, would you? But I simply flash the brights, and that's the flash to pass system. I've been using this system. This is the third bike now I've had it installed on. To me, it's priceless. Flash the brights, and up it goes again. So I bet I've had this system for at least 10 years now. And right here is where I've mounted the receiver, relatively close to my garage door. I can usually operate it, oh, I don't know, about 10, 15 feet away. The bracket's gonna mount up between the forks here. You're going to use a T40 Torx. Sorry for the video, I had a hard time filming this part. This is what the bracket looks like installed, but due to fitment issues, I had to add a washer and a lock nut for a spacer to get the uh, horn centered. This horn has polarity. Pay attention to the positive and negative wires as you hook it up. Here you can see maybe the lock washer and flat washer I added. Then come down here and look. It's nice and centered. If you notice, I took part of the plastic off for more clearance right there on the right side. Otherwise, it would have caught the fork as it went up and down. I had to make a few adjustments for the angle of the bracket to make sure the forks clear the horn when the handlebars turn full lock left, full lock right. 
This is how I managed to stuff all the wires under the rear seat. Make sure you use the blocking plugs on the hex easy can on the circuit you don't use to keep them free of dirt and water. Installation instructions for the hex easy can can be found on their website linked below. Here's the hex easy can software. If you notice up here there's triangles because the bike has not been turned on yet. It goes off as soon as the bike is turned on. Now if you notice I have the horn fuse for 10 amps to begin with. I'm not sure if that's right, wrong, or indifferent. If we come up here to diagnostics, you can see what the current readings will be. Let me get it where you can see it maybe a little bit better here. Alright, I blasted the horn. It had a peak of 30 amps, which isn't surprising. That's called inrush. Now when I really lay on the horn, notice it overloaded. I saw it go up to possibly 14 amps, so let me change the amperage here. Of course, you got to remember how to do it right. So hit cancel, dum-dum. There you go. There you go. Click on the amperage. Go down to 15. Click on it. Now let's push the button and hold. Let's see what happens here. Notice it's holding just under 14 amps, so I think we should be good. Okay, I need to warn you, this is what the normal BMW horn sounds like. Granted, it's inside the house, so it's going to sound louder than it would outside. As we wait for the bad boy air horn to go off, let me thank you for watching this video. I hope you got something out of it. Please give me a big thumbs up, a like, and hit that subscribe button. Thank you. Okay, here comes the bad boy air horn from Harbor Freight.